Hi everybody, it's Josh Pruitt Realtor with Pure Gold Realty. I'm here today to talk to you guys about the housing market stats of August 2021. There's a lot of great info within, so let's get to it. everybody let's get to it so as everybody's heard so far this year it's been kind of crazy here in austin low supply huge demand is driving prices up up and up and so you know the latest numbers that we got for austin round rock um it looks like are up about 34 percent so the median sales price in the austin round rock area is four hundred and seventy thousand dollars, up 34 percent over last year which is considerable it, it, that's that's quite a bit of, of appreciation gained by a lot of homeowners in the area that being said closed listings are down it makes sense because inventory is down so the number of listings has decreased by about four percent the average days on market are is 14 days. That's down 30 days from this time last year. So 14 days on the market on average in Austin and Round Rock. This is for the month of August. That's ridiculous. I mean, that's unheard of. That I mean, that means most homes are going within the first week and then some maybe less desirable homes are taking three weeks. Um, and so that's pretty amazing. You don't have to spend a lot of time on the market, dealing with showings, dealing with all that hassle. Um, you're putting it on the market and for a weekend, maybe you're heading out of town or you're just making yourself scarce, letting all the showings happen and then, you know, collect offers and, and choose one the following couple of days. But the story is changing a little bit. Um, the latest news is that the market has cooled off a little bit, and that's true. The amount of listings that have come on the market are up about 14% over last year. So that's good. People have gotten the news, hey, Austin is highly desirable. A lot of people wanna relocate and move here and or invest into, you know, secondary third homes here in Austin. So that means people who are holding on uh, to their property for a little bit longer are deciding to get into the market to go ahead and make that move and make that transition, whether it's out of state to a smaller home or whatnot. So that's good that we're getting some more listings because we want a little bit more of a normal market, not so tight. We want people to have flexibility. We want movement to happen. Uh, we want people to be able to get into new homes um, you know, and, and before when we had one week's worth of inventory, it was quite hard for anybody to sell and move up in, into size of home or different neighborhoods or whatnot based on schools or, you know, what, you know, quality of life or maybe a new job. So now we're about, you know, in August, we're at one month's worth of inventory. So that means if we had no new listings come on the market, we'd be out of listings within one month. Whereas a lot of times this year so far, we've had one week. So one week we'd be out of listing. So, so that's good. We're starting to pump up, um, pump up the volume. On housing. <laughs> um, Okay, so a lot of that info is for Austin and Round Rock. So for Austin proper, uh, the median sales price is up 27%, um, which is quite a bit, and it's 540,000. So um, it's considerably higher in Austin than you know combining Austin and Round Rock. And new listings are up there as well. So that's really good. It's up 23% uh, over last year. So again, People are starting to get the hint um, and let's go ahead and, and sell, make a move, make a transition. Um, and that's good. We want a more open market. We don't want it to be so constrained and tight um, because that's just, that's not good for, well, I mean, it's good for sellers, but uh, just by and large, it's not great. You know, you would say it's good for sellers if you have somewhere else to go, but it's not good for somebody looking to sell their home and, and upgrading in, in, in size condition, 
uh, and or a location or just, you know, a lateral move somewhere else based on schools or work. So um, we need we need some of this, some of this to open up. So that's good. So kind of the word on the street right now is that things are normalizing, that some houses are sitting on the market longer. Um, prices are being reduced uh, a little bit more of a, a higher rate than they were you know, so far this year. And I, and I believe that's true. There is some truth to that. Um, but I also know this market um, that I, I kind of feel like we're getting towards the pre 2021 market, uh, maybe not so much what happened at the height of COVID or, you know, what happened maybe 2020, but years before in, in a little bit in the middle or the beginning of 2020, where um, if you have a good listing that's presented well and priced well, it's going to have interest. It's going to have multiple offers. But if you're a seller and you're trying to get top dollar and you're you're bringing that that listing price up because you've heard all the noise, you've heard everybody saying they're getting $100,000 over list. Um, there's a lot more nuance to that. You can't just, you know, you can't just put a, a house on the market and, and already put the premium on top of there. Um, there's ways to get a lot of interest in your home and to get um, people bidding against each other in order to win the rights to that home. Uh, and so pre presenting it in, in such a way uh, where people, where it drives traffic, where it brings a lot of people in is key. And then part of that as well is pricing. And so if you're putting a premium on that, people, you know, rightly, and maybe not so rightly all the time, have a sense in their brain that's like, hey, there's already a premium on it. Uh, I know. You know, because buyers are savvy, they, they have a lot of information, they have a lot of access to this. They're saying, okay, that's, you know, what we would think we would have to bid to win out on a, on a multiple offer situation. So they're, they're thinking possibly um, that I'm going to have to go even higher than that. And so maybe they're backing out because it's too rich for their blood, right? Yeah. That's yeah. saying it's... Yeah. It's too much. I'm, I'm backing out. I'm not going to be interested in that because I feel like I understand what it's going to take to win that. Um, so pricing it to a point where it drives a lot of traffic is key. It's crucial. And then your online presence is extremely crucial. Um, it has to be staged or at least we have to get the, the stager and the interior designer in to take what you have there maybe add a couple accessories, but organize it and strip away a bunch of ac excess um, to a point where they're basically staging with your furniture. We at least need that, right? So, um, you know, give me a call if you have any questions about any of this stuff. Um, I'm happy to talk to you about it. Uh, that's what I love to do. So, but talking about what I feel is going to happen towards the, towards the end of the year, I think we've got about two more months of solid activity usually when we get to the point where if we put a contract on a house and we can't really close maybe by christmas you know a nice christmas home or you know at least enough time to maybe put up a tree and some presents and have our christmas at our new home <laughs> or you know something like that but even um, before the end of the year because once january 1 hits um if you a few so for the homestead exemption if you're living in the house before january 1 that following year you can get that homestead exemption which is about 10 percent off your taxes but if you occupy the home after january 1st you can't take it for that year um so you know there's there's a lot of buyers still out there wanting to make deals before the end of the year before christmas um you know before they take time off you know Usually it's right around Thanksgiving because once Thanksgiving hits, you know, we're done with that. You know, we want time on Thanksgiving with our families or, you know, just time off of work, time away. Um, and then a lot of people put it on cruise control until January 1. You know, they, they do what they need to do. They kind of finish up what they need to finish up before the end of the year. And a lot of times it's not getting into the process of buying a home. So... 
between now, I would say, and, you know, Thanksgiving, um, which is in about two months already, holy cow, uh, we're going to have plenty of action. So if you're considering selling your home, uh, we still have plenty of time to get in, uh, to get motivated buyers into your house um, and to make that change for yourself as well if you're looking to sell and buy. Um, and then usually, um, you know, once February comes, prices will increase a little bit. We're going to start looking at 2022 prices um, and, you know, maybe another crazy year. Uh, I do anticipate a pretty hot spring, honestly. Um, just, I would say anecdotally, I don't have anything metric that I can prove that's that's going to happen. But with with all the, you know, different announcements that I've been talking to you guys about with with Apple and Samsung and Tesla and all these companies, Google, um, I'm not sure when their high rise is going to be built, but um, there's a lot, a lot of activity here, a lot of people coming here. Um, so spring uh, was just before. So Apple campus, I hear is supposed to be done by about May 2022. Um, and so you've got a lot of people moving here for that campus right around that time. So I feel spring is going to be another hot market here in Austin. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching my video. If you know anybody looking to buy or sell real estate, please send them my way. I'll treat them like family. Anyway, it was a pleasure serving you. We look forward to the next one. Y'all be good, be safe, stay healthy, and have a great day.